Hey, boys and girls, we're here at Our Next Energy. I'm here with Mujeep Ijess. You've met him uh, once before, but today we're going to be talking about and showing you the pre production line that's just on the other side of that wall. So, what have you got to say for yourself now that you're a bazillionaire? I'm, I'm happy to have you here, Sandy. It's okay. great to have you here. Yeah. And what we're excited to show you now is our first Michigan made cells that are going to be going into automotive applications. And these cells are LFP, so right, lithium LFP. iron ph phosphate. And uh, pretty much all the materials are right here in Michigan. We're, right? we're going to source in, uh, North, American North American materials. Yes. That's right. And then uh, the factory you're standing in is uh, located in Warren, uh, Van, Buren, Van Buren, Michigan, yeah. and it's 20 gigawatt hours. So 20. the total capacity of this factory site will be 20 gigawatt hours over a three year period. And how big is this thing? Because it's huge. Oh, it's uh, 659,000 square feet. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it's big, but the guy that's putting all the equipment in keeps telling me it's small. <laughs> it's not no big enough. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> that's right. Well, you can always move the, I see Federal Express is next door. You can just yeah, move I'll those just move out. On and, in. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, let's go and move right, on in deal. next door here. Yeah. Very good. Welcome, welcome <laughs> to one. So where we're standing, there are four topics that go on from this central area. Yeah. The first is that we have mixing of cathode. This is where the LFP is being mixed. We'll walk on in. And the mixing of cathode material includes us buying powders, binders, right. solvent, and we're in putting in these mixers the necessary design elements, all of the bill of materials, and then we mix that slurry up. <clears throat> As you come up with a slurry, that slurry is coated on aluminum foil. Yeah. So that's what makes the electrode. Right. So what you're seeing yeah, here, what you see here is the LFP. This is a coated electrode. It's about to start its journey to be coated on both sides. So we coat one side, then we flip it over and we coat the second side. Over here on the cathode, sorry, on the anode. anode. <clears throat> what you'll see is the anode, now on the cathode it's LFP, on the anode it's graphite. So right. we have this copper foil running and you'll see up there that sort of black uh, slurry. That is where the slot die is coating the graphite that was in a slurry. It's being pumped into that slot die and then coated in a uniform thickness. And what we're doing is in the, in the uh, chamber that the electrode is going in is we're drying off the solvent. So we first coat, then we dry, and then we calendar, we compress that electrode. So we'll show great. you that in the next room. Great. Let's go and have a look at that. All right, great. <clears throat> so you know, the, the, uh, the systems that I saw in China were we're huge in comparison to this, so I'm hoping. When this we... is a this is a <clears throat> pilot. Yeah. It's meant to be in low volume. Yeah. So everything is kind of micro scale, and there's a reason for that. When we do a pilot factory, we're qualifying new materials. Those new materials sometimes are not available in the massive quantities because yeah. you got new suppliers that you're bringing right. up. Yeah, yeah. So then what you do is you kind of make the coating and mixing small enough that you can take like maybe 20 kilograms of material instead of buying a metric ton yeah. of material. Okay. Then you qualify it. So the pilot is always done for a battery factory. Okay. It's the way that you prove your suppliers and your cell design. So once you can make like, this, this factory will make 10,000 cells in a month. That's enough for us to validate the product, get the design right, get the suppliers right. Then we build the gigafactory. So that's the nature of every battery factory is we go from pilot to full production. So are you gonna be making um, cylindrical or are you gonna be- No, these are actually or? metal can for automotive. Ah. So they call it prismatic. Prismatic, so prismatic yeah. metal can, yeah. yeah. So you'll see when we were on the other side, this uh, anode material is now coming out dry. Dried, yeah. And so it's dried. And so that gray represents the graphite. And then on the other side, we can show you the cathode material this represents the LFP. So, so the LFP is, and the graphite are on aluminum foil and then copper foil. Right. So this is now coated on both sides, correct? Coated on both sides, yeah. exactly. Good. Good. Now after we coat, we go through a process. The process is called calendaring. 
What we're yeah. doing is we're effectively compressing. Now, you'll notice that this side, the black is kind of dull. Right. It's like a matte finish. Yeah. I'll show you the other side. So just to, just to qualify it a little bit, calendaring is, uh, is compressing for compressing. Yeah. yeah. So what you'll see, this is shiny now. Right. Now, what we did is we actually compressed what was a porous, fluffy, dried material into now a hard, very tight, energy dense. That's also done for making sure all the battery particles are connected so the impedance right. is low. Right. So calendar is good for energy density and power, both. And so we calendar both the, the cathode material and the anode material. Right. And then we have that material enter. We have that material enter a stamping machine. And what we're doing is, you'll see a video, you'll see a picture of what we're doing up there on the camera. Yeah. Is we're stamping the electrodes and taking then pictures of every electrode to prove the quality. And then that, after these electrodes are stamped, they come into magazines. So what we're doing then is we're filling up a magazine of electrodes and you can see them over here. So basically, the process of, of these electrode stamping machines is to make the cathode electrodes and then the anode electrodes. Right. And then we're gonna go stack them in the next room into cells. So what we're looking at here is, um, normally what we see is like smaller um, cells. They're only about, I don't know, uh, six or eight inches. These ones here look more like about a foot. Um, so this would give you um, what I would classify as better density for, uh, for manufacturing uh, battery packs. For so, automotive. And yeah, for automotive. Right. And this is not what we see everywhere. Some people are still using the small pouches and whatever. So yeah. this, is a, this is a much more effective, efficient way of getting yeah. the job done. And our idea is that we want to make an LFP battery give you the same range as any nickel cobalt battery. Yeah. And the reason that's important is that we get rid of cobalt, we get rid of nickel and cobalt's cost, but also the risk of fire. Right. And, and as we are saving the range, reducing the cost, and getting risk, rid of the risk of fire, it becomes a better alternative for automotive. So the big thing for me is that this is the battery that everybody would want, except for the few people, I, d I don't want to put myself into a bad category, the few nutcases that want to go like a rocket ship, which brings me back. When, when are we going to do the race between the baker and the Detroit? Oh, okay, now that, that, you, okay. It, yeah, I won't, I, won't, I won't make any excuses. Okay. I'll just say that we have to invite you very soon we got to do that ass, race. We got this big ass factory. We could race right here. All right, that's a good okay, idea. So, anyways. Uh, now, so now, what we're doing is we left one room. Now, the reason we left that room is that room is at a drying condition of 10% relative humidity. That means there's some water in the air, only about 10%. Yeah. This next room is less than 1%. Right. It's actually around 0.5% humidity. Right. What's important about that is we have to make the cells in a dry room, completely dry, right. because when we put electrolyte in the cell, the reaction with electrolyte and water is not good. No. So that's why this is a dry room. Well, there's another reason too, right? Because that room's dirty and this one is not. Exactly, because yeah. also the particles yeah, with respect particles. to stamping, we want to keep that out of here. Yeah. But we do have evacuation for particles yeah. so that we don't have dirt in that room as well. Okay, so uh, I know I'll get, a, I'll get something if I don't mention this, but when you pull the particles out, they're going into something to reclaim. So we reclaim, exactly. Yeah. And also solvent, all the solvent that we're evaporating from the electrode is 100% reclaimed and recycled, not wasted. Yeah, exactly. Great. We don't want any atmosphere. So all you guys that are gonna give me uh, some <clears throat> garbage about, oh, you're polluting it. No, you're not. All right, good. So now the first, we're, what, th this room is gonna go down this side and then come back. So it kind of oh, goes okay. down and back. And what we're doing with making these cells is the first thing is we have these big chambers here. Yeah. These are called vacuum drying ovens. Yeah. So we take those electrode magazines, we'll put them in a vacuum drying oven, we'll remove all the water, make sure that the water's gone. And then because we're in a less than 1% dry room, the water will stay out. 
And after we go out of these vacuum drying ovens, we go into stacking the cells. And that's what we'll show you next. So what we're doing with respect to stacking the cells is you'll see that we're picking up electrodes and we're putting them in the middle so there's a separator going back and forth. Yeah. We're putting one cathode, one anode, and a separator in between. And that then builds up the lithium ion cell, but it's dry without electrolyte at this point. Right, yeah. Okay. And we'll show you what those look like on the output. So in the context of now what this automotive cell looks like prior to going in the metal can, you'll yeah. see you have all the aluminum uh, yeah, well, electrodes yeah. welded together. Yeah. And then we have all the copper electrodes welded together. And then what this jelly roll, this represents is the dry cell. I'm gonna give this back to Joshua. And then we'll show you now this being placed in the metal can. So you'll see each one of these now is lined up in this yeah. rack. As we have this, we go through a process where we have to prove that the electrodes have no short circuit. So we put a, a load on it and we do a high pot test to make sure there's no dielectric problem with respect to the cell. Now, yeah. from the standpoint of uh, the finished cell, what you'll see is an example after we put the cell in its metal can, yeah. where we weld all the terminals, the vent, right. we fill it with electrolyte, and when, when it's all finished at that level, we'll put them in a chamber and do the first charge and discharge cycle. Okay. So what this cell, this process is doing is building up first the dry cell, then we load it in the metal can, then we put the electrolyte, then we do the charge and discharge. So just out of curiosity, where's the machines that stick it inside? Yeah, it's, it's over here. Sunny, what, what this machine does is, once the jelly rolls are made on the stacking machine, yes. we insert the jelly roll inside the case, and then we have the cap on both the sides. So well, that's the thing I wanted to see was, how do you get the jelly roll in? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's, the, that's the big thing for me. We, we are in the middle of commissioning process, but the process how it works is we load the jelly rolls over here, the can is kept over there, so these we have loaders which pick up the jelly roll, places mm -hmm. the can, and then we insert the jelly roll inside the can. Okay. So there's three components. We, sh ah, we shared so you with got you. it in a cradle. Yeah, exactly. Ah, yeah, it's cheating. We, we put it in a cradle <laughs> because that gives it the yeah. structure it needs. Right, yeah. And then the metal can has an opening. Yeah. Right. And then we have these cap assemblies. So okay. in the context, these are the parts. It's cap, okay. it's the can, it's this cradle, good word, and then the jelly roll. Right. So um, in China, I, I saw them do both things, either with the uh, cradle or just shoving them in a can. And I watched that and wow, my eyes got really big because, well, this one's really well made. What are you, laser cut these? Yeah, these are laser cut. Yeah. yeah. These are really well made. Anyhow, they weren't. <laughs> weren't quite as good as what uh, that one is. And I remember sh seeing him shove in, and when he shoved him in, sometimes they're, they're feeling getting, they're getting, they're getting yeah. stuck, yeah. So anyways. So no, that's actually a very good observation, and so the purpose of that is to give it some structure. Yeah. Also then, when you're not putting stress on the uh, electrodes, right. you're actually using and managing and handling the part. And so in the context of this machine, we'll share that video with you, and you can Okay, so there's in. one thing, one other thing too, and that is that when you do uh, lithium ion, um, cobalt, uh, nickel, when you, when you have those and you're using uh, either a prismatic or a pouch style, um, any kind of bending and they instantly have a problem. Hence the LG GM issue, uh, which, I mean, uh, kicked the daylights out of both names. So, so this, this is, is why really metal can. Idea. If yeah. you feel that, go ahead yeah. and try to bend it. Wow, well, come on. See, I haven't, I haven't, so what we're doing I is my we're today. integrating, <laughs> we're, we're welding all of that shot yeah, and right. it's a solid can. So right. what that does is it gives it enough structure that we're not then putting a load into the electrode. Right, so the deal here is too that, uh, again, when you go back to lithium ion versus LFP, um, how much expansion do you have to contain 
uh, because these things, as they cycle, they breathe. It's 0 0.5 millimeters of expansion on this thickness cell. 0 0.5. So half a millimeter. Half a millimeter. We, we have a compliant system to manage that swelling. So every cell we put a compliant layer. It's like a, a rubber pad. Is that uh, what we're looking at? No, here on it's on the outside. Oh, it's on the outside. It's on the pack assembly. I see. Not the cell assembly, but on the pack side. We put that layer so that as the cell is cycling and expanding, that we take up that throughout the pack about a half a millimeter swelling. Okay. Now, if that's half a millimeter per cell, in between, you have to manage a millimeter of swelling. Yeah. So this, the material is designed to handle both cells swelling At the internal yeah. to that gap, right. okay. a total of one millimeter. <clears throat> Good deal. Okay, so the other thing, of course, is cooling. Yeah. So uh, wicking away the heat, where do you uh, do that? Yeah, if you think about like a pouch cell that's in the typical soft type, yeah. they put a heat sink on the cell. Yeah, they do. Well, the metal can is a perfect heat sink by itself. So what we do is we mount the cells onto a cold plate. So in the battery pack, the, the side wall is bringing the heat down and we're cooling this surface here. Yeah, okay. Now, if you want fast charging, we've done fast charging with our LFP packs from 10 to 80% in 12 minutes. Now, in order to do that, that's a very fast, fast charge. You have to cool the bottom and the top. Right. So we put two cold plates, one on the top, one on the bottom. If you don't want 12 minutes, you want 20 minutes, then we can just use one cold plate and we can wick the heat down. So I've got another question then as well, and that is, um, Okay, so right now everybody's running at 400 volts for, uh, for charging. What happens to this when it goes to 800? Because it's right around the corner. Yeah, so what we do is the number of cells in a battery pack varies, but somewhere like, let's say, 120 cells are in a 400 volt battery pack. We just double that to 240 cells to make an 800 volt battery pack. But then what we need to do is make it thinner. So yeah. we make the cell thinner and then we have twice as many cells. Right. So this cell line is fixed at the certain thickness here, but the equipment is flexible. We can make any number of, of layers. Right. Yeah. We can make any thickness. We can still have the same carrier, the same terminal and cap. cap. Yeah. We just decide the thickness according to the voltage and the pack design. So a car, a car company will give us a pack design. This is 120 millimeters. Some of them are 135, some are 100. We have to make different heights yeah. and different thicknesses to handle the voltage and even different lengths. So our equipment in this line, we can make any cell from 300 millimeters up to 600 millimeters on the same equipment. Okay, so going to 800 volts, my, <clears throat> the way uh, I interpret it anyways and the way I'm expecting things to happen is that if it takes 15 minutes to get to 80%, it should take uh, uh, basically half that if I've got 800 volts, is that gonna not, happen? Not, not exactly half, because you're constrained by the amount of power right. that you can put in every cell. If you make the cell half as small, you have to also lower the current. It's the, the amp hours, so, so it doesn't go down by that much. But you can say that if you had a 400 volt battery charging at 15 minutes, you might be able to get to 12 or 11 minutes, but it's not gonna be half. Well, the, uh, the proponents, I, and I'm glad you said that because I feel vindicated, the uh, proponents on 800 volts are saying 50%. I don't buy into it. I can't figure out how that works. I, I can so, explain how they're saying that. If, if, for example, the battery pack is constrained by the maximum current that can come in, yeah. the contactor, right. you double the voltage, you can get twice the power through that contactor, right. but the cell has still got the same limitation. Right. So it, on the contactor side, you can go faster. But on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, the total time in charging doesn't go down by half. It'll go down a little, but not by half. So once you insert the jelly roll inside the can, the next yeah. step is we do the welding just to make sure the can and cap are completely sealed. And that happens on these two machines. Don't you have to put the electrolyte in first? That's after that. Oh, that's after yeah. welding? So once you oh, weld okay. it, then the next step is we have a bunch of Well, can we have a look at the welding equipment? It's or is inside it? the chamber. Oh, it's in the yep, same. So you won't oh, be able okay, to see it. It's a laser yeah, welding. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Once you weld, the next four are inspection stations where you check for the integrity of the weld. So we pass a helium gas inside a chamber, check for right. the leak rate, typical leak test. And the next three are the electrical tests. 
which checks for the potential, the internal resistance, and the slot. So we check for those three. And the next step is the electrolyte step, where we start putting in the electrolyte inside the, the can. And right now what you are seeing is we are going through the site commissioning process. So what happens is, so we fill in the electrolyte in the zone. So we, see, we take the plug off, we seal the electrolyte. In this particular cell configuration, we put roughly around 400 milligrams of, 400 grams of electrolyte. It's a carbonate with a salt base with a few other additives that goes in. And we, we fill the electrolyte in stages because as we start filling in, there is a gas formation. We want to make sure the entire gas is taken off. So it also has to absorb in all the pores, right, yeah, so the yeah. materials are dry. It takes yeah. time for it to get into all the pores as well. So let me ask a question. <clears throat> Does the gas come out of the same... Uh, like we evacuate We evacuate, we evacuate okay. the gas. All right. yeah. so that the we'll, we'll eventually weld it, eventually. Yeah. 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 So we fill 100%, we do it in stages. Once it is filled, we send it to a high temperature chamber, let it settle for 24 hours at 45 C. During that process, as Muji mentioned, the electrolyte is all soaked inside the electrodes. Once that is done, we get it back and then we remove the plug and we put a temporary seal on it and we do a terminal weld on top of that. So that completes the electrolyte process. Perfect. Okay, and so we've already come through here. So these are the formation. This is kind of the birth charge. So the very first charge that the battery goes through after we put electrolyte and it's fully degassed is we'll bring it over here, charge it. The charge is done not all the way to the top. When we charge it a little, we go back and degas. Then we come back, we weld shut, and then we can charge and discharge. That first charge generates gas because all yeah. of the particles in the anode, they have to form a chemistry, kind of like a, a surface chemistry. Yeah. It's called SEI or solid electrolyte interface. Yeah. That chemistry does generate gas. Once we get rid of that gas after the first bit of charge, we weld it shut, and then we can charge and discharge, measure capacity, and then quality, and then it's ready to go. Okay, so um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what uh, what sort of uh, what sort of scrap rate are you seeing uh, with your with your products right now? So in the pilot line, because we're in what we call site acceptance testing, yeah. everything is kind of like just proving that the machines work. Right. as opposed to trying to be productive. So it's hard for me to answer or measure that. But what we normally see and expect is the beginning after we start production, which will start in January. So this, this idea is pilot qualification. Then we go into full making 10,000 cells every month yeah. in January. As we do that, we expect the yield to be somewhere around 40% yielded good product and then climbs up from 40 to 70, 75, and then we'll go from 75 to 90. So that, that yield process maturity can take six months. So that's partially why you build a small line like this, because yeah. you're proving out chemistry, the material suppliers. Importantly, Sandy, we're training our workforce. We're right. hiring new workers yeah. here. Yeah. We currently have 70 workers in this building. That workforce, has the responsibility to learn how. At the same time that we're building product, we're also training the workforce. Then as time goes on, we're validating the cell. So we'll put the cell through like our own validation, the vehicle companies will do their validation. That pilot serves lots of purposes. Then we build the Gigafactory. And what I want yeah. to show you next, and we'll walk to it, is what the Gigafactory is going to look like. Cool, cool. So I got one other question before yeah. we get off quality. What do you do with the cells that are of no value? Yeah, right now we currently have a relationship with a recycling company that works with to take the materials that are scrap, put them through a recycling process, and in some cases, if we can recover the copper, aluminum, and the active materials, we'll be a buyer for those active materials back into our process. Cool. So you're both recycling and reusing. That's right. <clears throat> Perfect. This entire room from here to the uh, end of the wall is going to be the grid cell. So we're making a utility grid product that's going into like microgrids for solar and wind. Yeah. That birth of that cell will be this room. That's the next expansion. So we're yeah. doing automotive cell. This will be done by April. 
and this will make not 10,000 cells, but around 100,000 cells every month. So this, uh, <clears throat> this might be the, uh, the place where you'd uh, maybe buy something for your house. Uh, so you'd be basically competing with the, uh, the, the Tesla. Uh, it's not the Tesla house wall, type of power so. wall. It's more like solar, big solar farms from utilities. Yeah. We're the huge battery, like a 20 foot container, three and a half megawatt hours per battery. Yeah. And then we're helping them charge and discharge and use the energy at night. Hmm. Yeah. So that's gonna be, so this is our pilot line for the grid cell yeah. will be in this, this building here. So it's kind of like a peaker uh, system. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> now behind that wall is the rest of the factory. So I wanna share with you the expansion. So this was phase cool. one. Yeah. We did this in a uh, year. Phase two will be done in the second year, which is to build a gigaline. That'll make around 30,000 automotive battery equivalents every year. Yeah. And that's primarily gonna be used for the grid. We'll be making yeah. grid products. Yeah. And uh, then we'll keep expanding into more lines as time goes on. Cool. All right, now, we got a surprise for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we thought we thought we can't have you here without taking our little race around the yeah. parking lot. Wow. This is a great place to are race around the parking lot. Really? We're wow. going to get them out of here when you and I are going to drive them today. When, when are we going to do the race between the Baker and the Detroit? This factory, the total factory is 659,000 square feet. And what you see <clears throat> is we're starting to pour concrete. Yeah. We moved into this building, uh, effectively this whole thing was dirt. We have, we've finished the phase one with the pilot line. Yeah. And now we're moving to pour concrete up to about three quarters. We've been able to lay all the infrastructure. You see the infrastructure to run yeah. the factory's yeah. uh, utilities here. Yeah. And now uh, pouring the concrete and getting, we've even put the pads for the heavier machines where right. yeah. they're all uh, footered in a little bit of a deeper concrete. Well, that's what I was just looking at, how thick the, the floor is. Yeah. Normally I would expect to see, not a round one, but a diamond shaped one that says that this is like hugely thick. Yeah. So our goal is to have this running end of next year for 2.7 gigawatt hours. Then we do line two, then line three, then line four. Mm. So line one comes at the end of next year. So line one comes next year. What, um, just out of curiosity, uh, how long before the place is up and running, running at full capacity? This whole building will be filled by 25. 25. Yeah. And we'll have the, the target workforce in the building is around 2,100 employees total. 2,100. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. I, I would have. Three thought. shifts. So we're also oh, running three, three shifts. shifts. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> wow. This is really quite amazing. That's a lot different than the first time I met you in that <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sandy, I promised you a ride. Yeah. Now you got to decide, and I'm not going to give you any specs. Uh, pick, well, pick your carriage. Well, um, this is a 1912 Baker, yeah. 1922 Detroit Electric. Well, I mean, I'm going to go with the Detroit Electric simply right. because the interior is so much more magnificent. <laughs> okay, and uh, then I'm driving the Baker. Well, we have a we have a, a, a tiller. First thing is there's no steering wheel, and then the second thing is we have an accelerator throttle. We have a little horn here. Top of the day. Okay, you ready? Ready. Good. I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> <laughs> and then it go, it goes into four positions. What we're doing is there's a 42 volt battery in both the front and rear. And as we accelerate, it actually connects the batteries in series, makes it an 84 volt battery. So that's how we pick up speed. Looks like Sandy's got the jump on us. Of course, his vehicle's a 1922 and mine's a 1912. So I guess in 10 years, they must have picked up a little speed. <laughs> <clears throat> that was made in Detroit. This was made in Cleveland, Ohio. 
Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. We didn't see anything, right? <laughs> Well, Sandy, you chose well. Well, actually, uh, I was just going to say, maybe we should try it again because... Because I, I cheated? Just, yeah, I think you threw the race here. Yeah, I cheated. I went, I kind of, I took a tight turn. But my vehicle's 10 years older than yours. So I guess your, your batteries are better. Everybody, thanks for watching. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Majib, for Thank letting you, me, uh, you know, use the better car, Detroit Electric. <laughs> you so, selected well. I did. I, I only, I, you know, I'm, I'm a Detroiter, so what, what am I going to do? There you go. Yeah. So anyways, this was really a lot of fun. Thanks so much for the tour. Thank you so much for letting, uh, letting me drive your car. This was brilliant. You All right. Thank you Take so care, much. Sandy. Now you got to crank some, uh, you got a lot of doors here. We got a lot ship. of doors. We got a lot of work go. to do to make yeah, this exactly. thing a running battery factory. <laughs> Absolutely. Now. You bet. Absolutely. All right. Great Take stuff. care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. Take care. Yep. All right. Good deal. All right. Here we are.